Amen. We want to welcome everybody that is watching with us online right now. Let's, uh, let's welcome them with a hand clap. We appreciate you guys joining us. We appreciate you joining us here at Finish Line Christian Center. Our ministry is, is expanding and growing. The audience is getting bigger and bigger. And uh, how many believes God's going to increase the stage in which Finish Line is going to be on in 2018? I believe that. <clears throat> We're going to reach more people. We're going to see more souls saved, more families healed and delivered, more marriages ministered to. It's going to be... I prophesy is going to be a fantastic year. Amen. <clears throat> the Bible says, speak those things that are not as though they were. And so if you do not have the power to be able to look into a situation and speak the opposite of what you see, then it is very hard for you to see change come into your life. I mean, you, you got to think about God talking to Abraham. He called him the father of many nations. He didn't even have one kid. And he's hearing these things, and he's having, to, he's having to process them, and then he is speaking back what God is telling him, that I am the father of many nations, and he hadn't even had one son yet. Listen, just because you haven't seen the fruit of what the Lord has promised you does not mean you will not inherit it. You have to understand that everything is a process with God. Everything is a process. You do not get saved one day, and the next day everything is hunky dory in your life. And you will, and, and like, okay, you know, everything's perfect at my job, and everything's perfect at my house, and my kids start acting perfect. Listen, that is not true. Somebody say, Amen. So what, what do we need? That's why God gives us grace. Grace is not some invisible thing that gives us the license to do whatever we want to and continue with God. Grace is enabling power. Say that with me. Say enabling power. Grace is what will get you through situations, is the power to get you through moments that you didn't think you would ever make. Is anybody in here that would just testify by the raising of your hand that you have, you have been through some places and made it through it, and you look back now and say, I don't know how I made it through that without losing my mind, and you realize that God's hand was with you in that season and in that moment and in that trial and, in, and every time God was faithful to bring you through it. Praise God. That's what grace is. And that's what we need. Praise the Lord. All right, how many's ready to start a new series this morning? Thanks a lot. That was very encouraging. I appreciate that. I can always count on Matt. Thank you, bro. We're going to start a new series. This series is birth. This is not, I'm telling you, what's not on my radar. Usually I have thoughts that are for very lengthy amounts of time for, for weeks and months before they turn into sermons and turn into sermon series. But however, this is very different for me because I did not have time to think about this one. This was, this was dropped in my spirit. How many ever felt something drop in your spirit and you knew it was God talking to you? You didn't need an earthquake and you didn't need some great big move and you didn't need to hear a boom out of heaven. God will talk to you sometimes out of that still, small voice and he'll speak right to your heart. This is what God, God spoke to my heart and he told me, he said, what is it that you want in 2018? And then he said, what is it that you're going to do to get it? Because here is what we all see and experience. We wait for God to do something. We wait for God to pour something out of heaven. We wait 
for the Spirit of God to change something in our lives. We wait and we, we spend our time waiting and waiting and praying and waiting and fasting and waiting. And the reality of it is, is that God is not wait we we should not sit in, in earth and wait for God to do something. God has given man the power and dominion and authority in the earth, and he is waiting for us to say enough is enough. I am changing my life. I am not waiting for another human being to tell me it's time to change. I'm not waiting for my boss to tell me it's time for a change. I'm not waiting for my spouse to tell me it's time for a change. God has spoken to me and I am going to put actions with my faith and I am going to do something different that I have never done in my life. We should not be waiting for God to move, but God is waiting for us to move, and God is going to respond to our faith. God responds. Just write that. If you're taking notes, write that down. God responds to faith. God doesn't respond to begging. God doesn't respond to pleading. God responds to faith. And when you exercise your faith, you will please God. And God will see your faith. And God will move because your faith put a demand on his power. I want to get outside of the box. I want to get outside of the norm of church. I want to get outside of the norm of what normal Christianity says and, and accepts as normal. I want to see people in wheelchairs get healed. I want to see deaf people hear again. I want to see blind people see again. I want to see those that have issues in their life that they struggled with like the woman with the issue of blood and that she'd been to every doctor and she'd been through every season and she'd given all the money she had and spent it all and she was in need and she meets Jesus, runs headlong into him and everything in her life changes. I want this church to be Jesus incarnate. I want us to walk as Jesus, talk as Jesus, love as Jesus, be compassionate as Jesus. And when somebody comes in, I may not look like him, I may not dress like him, but the Spirit of God that is on the inside of me and the Spirit of God that is on the inside of you, that they will see Jesus through you. I can't get no help in here. I don't even know if I'll ever be the same after today. I don't even, I don't even know if I'll preach the same. I don't even know if I'm going to even comprehend what, what used to be from what God is going to do because I understand that God desires to see the greatest revival in this earth. Listen, it is God's desire for us to reap the harvest. It is God's desire for us to go in the highways and the hedges. It is God. He's already told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature so that they may receive salvation. And what are we waiting on? What are we waiting on? He's already told us, and it is time for us to step up. And God told me these words. Throw it up on the screen. He said, it's time to raise the bar. time to raise the bar church it's time to raise the bar God is bigger than you are God is more powerful than you are God can do what you cannot do and God told me to get out of the way and allow God to do what he wants to do most of the problem with God being stopped or quenched is when we say, okay, God, I'm good with this amount of blessing, this amount of breakthrough. Uh, I, every, I don't understand or comprehend what's coming next. Therefore, I'm good right here. And God says, hey, you may be good, but I'm not. I see more for you. I see more and greater for you. I see you operating in a better place. I see you praying for people and they get healed. I see you laying hands on the sick and they recover. I see you going to another. I see your family in a better place than it's ever been. I see breakthroughs and deliverances coming, not at the hand of God, but at your hand stretching out in faith and letting God use your body as a vessel of good. We've already talked about it. God cannot work unless he has a partner in the earth. 
He's built it that way. He's engineered it that way. And so look at your neighbor and tell them this morning, say, God needs you. <clears throat> it's time to go higher. Listen, I used to do high jump when I was a young man. And I remember in the high jump, they'd always start the bar really low. And everybody would line up. Every, every team would line up. And you, you, you've seen them. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And, and they'd have a pad laid out back behind there. And, and, and you'd run up and run up beside as fast and as hard as you could. And you'd jump. And you'd jump over that bar. And you'd kick your legs up. And you'd, just, you'd do anything you can to get over that bar. And so, listen, whatever you do, don't knock the bar off and then land on the bar. You say, how do you know? Because I've done it, and it hurts. But they always start the bar out low, and everybody runs and jumps, and it's like, everybody, oh, this is easy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. So they, they jump, and everybody goes through, and then they pass. Okay, so they clear it without knocking it off. So what do they do with the bar? They take the bar, and they raise it up just a little bit. And then they run everybody through again. And, then, and, and, and whoever can't make it's out. And whoever's left continues and they'll raise the bar and raise the bar, raise the bar. Listen, God told me we need to raise the bar of our minds to believe that God can. We need to open our mind to expand the possibilities of what God can do. Do we read a book that says Jesus walked around and healed those that were in need? That he cast out demons of those that were filled with demons? Or do we believe it's just a story? Do we believe that the power of God is any less strong today as it was back then? Because the Bible says the same works Jesus did, you shall do. And so either this thing is real or it's not. Either we're going to take it at its word or we're going to have a weenie roast and we're going to throw our Bibles in a bonfire and burn them all. Because it's either all or nothing. You either take what this book says or you don't take it at all. Because, But we need to believe, listen, if we're going to take it, we are the Christians, we are the church. Listen, we need to take his word as truth and apply it to our lives and understand that God is bigger than your mind. Sometimes it's hard for us to comprehend God doing miracles or God stepping and doing greater things. Man walking on water and, and, and people that don't have arms that are withered up and he just tells them to stretch it out and they stretch it out and their hand becomes whole. It's, sometimes our mind gets in the way. We're here to blow your mind today. I'm here to break the mold of what you know is normal. I want a new normal. And I, I, I'm not going to stop until we get there. I'm not going to stop until we get there. Until people get saved at every service we have. I'm not going to stop until we see people delivered from drugs and alcohol. Every service that we have. I'm not going to stop until your family's whole and well and that you and, and, and that you are not running around conflicted all the time some of the most conflicted people i know are believers we're conflict we're conflicted we're in the world and we're and we're, when we're in the world we see the world and we're drawn by that and then we're at churches oh yeah well, I, I should be thinking about god and i should be i should be reading my bible and we're so conflicted sometimes we don't even know what we believe sometimes but i want to remind you this morning just just hear this preacher declare that god is still alive and that he is stronger than anything you've ever seen in this life and that he is not bound by our uh, fears, our worries, and anything in this earth. He is bigger. He is bigger. Let's go to the Bible. Isaiah 55. Let's start at verse number 6. Can I have like probably 10 or 15 minutes? I just need a few minutes to lay this out. You know, I think it's pretty cool that New Year's Eve has landed on a Sunday. I like that. Makes me happy. 
You know, we need a fresh start. Some of you need to start fresh. Some of y'all worried about losing weight. Some of y'all need to pick up a Bible. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Some of y'all know more about gym equipment than y'all do about Scripture. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Um, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. All right. The Bible says, seek you the Lord. I should drop this mic right here and be done. What do you want? What do you need? Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Listen, stop, stop complaining to everybody. Stop complaining to people that can't change anything in your life. Stop, comp stop complaining to your coworkers. They can't change your life. Stop complaining to your relatives. They can't change your life. Listen, seek after God. The Lord will change you. You can't seek God and backslide at the same time. Seek God. Amen. While he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Let's keep going. It says, let the wicked forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. So there's two aspects that he wants people to abandon. Abandon their wicked ways and abandon their unrighteous thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, I, I encourage you, 2018, listen, serve God. Return to the Lord. Return for your love for the house of God. Listen, you might find a hundred things wrong with this place, but you know what? Don't let, a, don't let a small thing stop you from the big thing. You may not like me. You may not like my beard. You may not like my clothes. You may not like how I preach. You may not like Bobby. I don't know who you may like or who you may not like. But don't let anything get in your way of God. I don't ever remember God coming down here and asking the disciples, how do you like it? Well, what do you want me to talk about? No, he said, listen, y'all be quiet. I'm teaching. He is the one that laid it out for us. So what we are, some of us are so concerned about what we want, and we have not asked God what He wants. When was the last time you stopped praying for the new job and started saying, God, which job would you have me? Oh, I knew, I knew it was going to be, I knew it was going to be good in here. I came with an amen in my pocket. Hallelujah. Amen, I got it with me. When was the last time we asked God what he wanted? They're not your kids, they're his. Ask him what he wants to do with them. You're trying to push them to do this and make them do this and force them to do this. Let's stop. Stop. Amen. Amen. They, listen, they might not be a professional ball player. What's your backup plan if they don't get into major leagues? You better put God in them because God is going to be the thing that sustains them through any season of their lives. Oh, don't get me started. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going to blow a gasket up in here. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God and he will abundantly pardon. We don't like to hear that. We want mercy for us. We don't want mercy for nobody else. We want God to strike people dead. We want God to go get them. God, get them. Kill them. Get them. They hurt me. Kill them. Yes. We want mercy and grace when it comes for us, but when it comes for our neighbors and our friends and other people, our enemies, we want them gone. God, wipe them off the face of the earth. Avenge my enemies. Half the time we're talking about other people that believe in God too. You just don't get along. Listen, then this is, this is the statement that I wanted to get to. Let's read this together. For my thoughts 
are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. I love it when he says that. You can't get mad at me for nothing because he said it. <laughs> he said it. He said, my thoughts aren't your thoughts and my ways aren't your ways. What he's trying to say, in other words, listen, you cannot comprehend everything that I do, when I do it, how I do it, based off of your finite mind. You can't figure out an infinite God with your finite mind. You, can't get, you cannot grasp every aspect of God with your finite mind. So stop putting God in the box of your mind. I'm going to give you an example. When me and my wife started this church, it don't, it, listen, I'm going to tell you right now. You, you would come in here today and you would think, man, they, they have a great ministry, and we do. God has blessed us with this great ministry. But I want to tell you, it looked like peanuts when we started. And I had an idea of what I thought God was going to do. I had an idea. I said, okay, God, this is, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have this set up. We're going to do this. We're going to, our music's going to be like this. I'm going to be like this. The church is going to be like this, blah, 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 blah. And this is, this is exactly how it's going to set up. And I had everything figured out in my mind. And the people that God started sending to our church were different. <laughs> Say different. different. See, I had come out of a church. It wasn't a, a big church, but the people in the church, they listen, they knew the Bible. You could quote and talk about Mephibosheth, and they'd say, Amen! You can talk about Elijah and Elijah, and you talk about King Ahab and talk about Jezebel, and they'd say, Preach, preacher. <laughs> Woo! And they knew it. The average person sitting on the pew knew more scripture than most preachers do today. And so people started coming to my church. I don't think they had, some of them had ever read a Bible. And so I'm over here, I'm talking about Mephibosheth, and they're going, Mephibba who? <laughs> Mephibba, huh? And then, and then, and then, and then they, the way they were dressed, they didn't, let it, they didn't look like me, man. I had a suit on, had my tie on, man. I, was, I had everything together, man. I had my shoes, everything. And then, and then, and then God started showing me, I want to do something different with you than you even think about yourself. I want to use you to reach people that other churches are missing. I want to use you to reach folks that other churches would push out the door and say, you don't look like us and you don't act like us. And I'm going to tell you what, today's product looks nothing like that what was in my mind. So either I could have had it my way and pushed God out or we could have what we have today and God be in it. Your next five years may not look like you think they're going to look. But you better be open to letting God do His thing in your life. And not just what you want in your life. I wish I had somebody that knew about Romans chapter 12. I just wish I knew somebody that knew about a living sacrifice. That you don't always get what you want when you're a Christian. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways saith the Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So he's pretty much telling you, mine's better. Just like heaven is higher, it's, heaven is better. Heaven has got the glory. Heaven has got the power. Heaven, heaven, is, it's all in heaven. Everything we could dream about, the blessing of God, it's in heaven. And he says, y'all are in the earth. Guess what? Mine's better. My thoughts are better. My ways are better. You know what God is telling us? Stop bucking my plan. Mine's better. Stop buck bucking my will. It's better. Listen, it will be much easier in your life if you just submit to God. It will. <clears throat> You got to stop running from him. 
It's okay. It's okay. If you don't like me right now, you might like me in a few more minutes. Let me finish this up. I'm going to talk about who God is. I don't, I don't have time to go through the rest of Isaiah. But I just want to talk about who God is. There's a few slides I pulled up. This is the, there's three things that God is. Number one, God is omnipresent. It's a fancy word that means God is everywhere at once. Okay. Can you fathom that? <clears throat> Do you understand that? You can only be at one place at one time. You can only be at one place at one time. God can be everywhere. So when you begin to pray, the Spirit of Almighty God has the ability to travel hundreds of thousands of miles in a second. Move on somebody in another place, in another time zone, in another arena, at the same time that you were over here praying and seeking to God. That's why there is no limitations. All you got to do is cry out to God. It doesn't matter what area, country, what time zone you're in. God will hear your prayers at the same time he's hearing mine. God is bigger than you. He is everywhere. He is everywhere, and he is in you. Something else. Let's keep moving. He is omniscient omniscient it's a fancy word for saying God is all knowing listen we need to stop dissecting the moments in our lives and going through every single detail and say well I didn't well I like this part but I didn't like this part and 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 this person was nice and this person wasn't nice and 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 this thing is this thing it, it works good but there's four other things that's not good how many knows that 99 things that work right and, and, and can be good for your life and one thing go wrong and, and you lose your mind? Y oh, yeah. I'm preaching to y'all. Yeah. I'm looking at you, okay? <clears throat> Just because you can't see the outcome doesn't mean God can't see the outcome. You may be in the middle of a trial going, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how it's going to work out. I've got circumstances that I don't even know how to handle. You, that's when you know that Romans 8, 28, that God is working everything out for your good. And so you throw your hands up and say, my life is submitted to God who is omniscient and he knows everything, including how this thing's going to end up. Just because you don't know doesn't mean God don't know. All right, what's the next one? Omnipotent. Or as one guy called it, omnipotent. I don't know where he was from. <laughs> omnipotent. God is all powerful. God is all powerful. Listen, there, I'm, I'm looking at some of you in here. And people wrote you off years ago and said you would never make it in your life. They said that you'd never amount to nothing. They wrote you off and look, here you are in your right mind and with the right heart standing before God, sober and clean and pure, justified by faith. So don't you ever, ever underestimate the power and the reach of an almighty God. And if he can do it in your life, he can do it in another's life. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Sometimes God does not make sense. There are times in your life when you try to think about God and his expanse and who he is, and it doesn't make sense in your mind. And it's okay. It's okay to say, I don't understand. Because you don't have to, listen, <clears throat> there's a lot of things I don't understand, but they work. Amen. Dirty dishes go in the sink at my house, and I come down the next day, and they're all clean. <laughs> it's like, it's magic. How many have ever seen the video with the guy with the clothes basket? <laughs> he said, listen, I'm telling you. I just leave stuff everywhere, and the next day it's clean. It's anointed. Now, I, I don't understand how car engines work. I know they got 
gas and air and there's a combustion and there's a piston and a cam and there's belts and pulleys and there, there's stuff on it, right? I get the concept, but if you ever ask, Shannon Williams, will you build me an engine? <clears throat> I don't even know if I could build you a bicycle. Like, I'm like, how do you make this chain work, man? I don't understand. And so I, I couldn't. My mind doesn't wrap around, you know, but I don't have to know how the engine works for me to operate it. I, I don't have to know all the details of the, of the parts and how many screws and bolts and nuts it took to put it together. I don't have to. All I have to know, you put gas in the thing and you hit the pedal on the right and the thing will move. And so you don't have to under listen, listen, there's there's things there's things that you don't understand about your life, but you just know what works and what don't. Why do we change and do that with God? Why do we say, Well, God, I gotta figure out everything about you before I'll follow you, before I'll trust you, before y'all are the dumbest people ever. If you're telling God, I gotta understand everything about you, you obviously don't know how big your God is. His thoughts are not yours. His ways are not yours. I'm trying to open your mind. I got three things I want to tell you right here. I'm ready. Just because it's outside of our mind and what we think is possible doesn't mean it's not possible with God. God can do what your brain can't even fathom. God has abilities and ways that you don't even understand. Don't try to figure it out. Just go with the flow. Go with, you know what? I have people come to me, you know, Pastor Shannon, I don't understand them gifts of the Spirit. Well, guess what? You don't have to understand every single thing about the Bible to operate in it. Just ask God for the gift. It's a gift. If I came out and said, I'm giving gifts to everybody, I don't quite understand your gift. I don't want it. Well, here's your sign. Somebody going to give me a gift, I'm going to receive it. Hallelujah. It's good. It's good. Receive the gift. Listen, God will explain himself and reveal himself in the season and timing that he will. I don't understand speaking in tongues, Pastor Shannon. I don't expect you to understand every single thing. But you know what? You operate in what God has for you. If the Bible says that we need to receive it and comprehend it, it may be outside of your mind, but it's not outside of God. I know I've just made all the Baptists mad. I made every one of them mad. But it's okay. I'm Baptocostal, so. <clears throat> Somebody told me I must have Baptists in me because every time we do something around here, we eat. So. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Number two, you might not be able to but God is. <laughs> you might not can get it done, but God can. Don't limit God based off of what you can or cannot do. Don't you ever put that on God. Well, I just don't see how God can do it. I just don't understand how the Lord's going to work this one out. I just, it's, it's just, oh my Lord, I'm freaking out over here. Do you not understand that God does not come to you and say, do you think I can do this? Now, God is sovereign. God will do whatever he wants to do. And you know what happens? If you don't believe it, you'll just miss it. I said, if you don't believe what God's doing, you'll just miss the move of God. Number three. We cannot judge what God can do based off of man's views. We're looking through man's eyes, man's circumstances, man's ways, and we are trying to figure out God. But God has a different view than we do. That's why I love it when God says he wants to call us up into heavenly places. Listen, this ain't just some frou-frou spiritual stuff he's talking about. He's saying, I want to bring you up into heaven, and I want you to see things like I see them. 
Listen, when you see people that are in need, I don't want you to look at them and say, oh, they disgust me. I want you to see them like I see them. I want you to say, they might stink. They might live on the street for three weeks. They might smell bad, but God sees a living soul. God sees a person in a human being that needs salvation and needs to live. Stop looking at stuff through your eyes and start seeing them through his eyes. Hallelujah. If the Bible says that you are well, then you can be well. If it says that you can be mature, you can be mature. If it says you can be brave or courageous, you can. If it says that the blind can see and the crippled can walk, then, it, then it's possible. It, it, let, let's increase what we know. Let's increase what we believe God can do. It's time to raise the bar. It's time to raise the bar on the possibilities. Just, just, just take the limits off. Take the governor off the engine and let the thing go where God says it can go. It's time for the church to do more than just run around and think about us. This is what I don't understand about some churches and mentality of church people. And some of y'all might have this church mentality. You come to church and, you, and, you, and your mentality is what can the church, what can the preacher, what can the praise team, what can the volunteers do for me? I'm going to tell you, that is a consumer-based idea. This is not a consumer-based idea. This is not an earth-based idea. This is a concept born of heaven. A body of Christ and a body of believers, if your attitude is not, how can I show up and be an attribute to the house of God, you have the wrong idea of what church is. Let me go in here, make sure I get my coffee. Make sure they get my kids checked in over here. Hurry up. Y'all can't get that computer working faster than that. Check them in. I got to get in here. Well, how about you show up about 30 or 45 minutes early? Get your coffee. Get your children checked in. So you won't be so frazzled. So when you do show up in here, you really can go, Woo! Rang them, rang them, rang them, rang them, rang them all the time. I'm running around. My husband getting, get in here. Just I can't find the seats. The lights are dimmed down. I can't hardly see where I'm going. What's going on in here? Hallelujah. I'm preaching real good right now, and y'all ain't even paying attention. It's time to raise the personal bar. You know, I've noticed about church people, we like to put bars higher for other people than we do ourselves. <clears throat> well, you, want, you want people to slide on you when you make a mistake, but you're willing to crucify somebody that makes a mistake for you. It's time to put up or shut up. And I mean every ounce of that word. Listen. Either you're going to bring something good or just shut up. You think, G you think Jesus would put up with you? Do you think Jesus would put up with your attitude? Do you think Jesus... Listen, Peter says, <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't washing my feet. <laughs> you ain't washing my feet. He said, listen, you, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. He's like, oh, well, then just wash it all. Wash it all, wash it all. Jesus was talking about what he would do, and Peter say, no, you ain't doing that. Uh-uh, we ain't going to let that happen. Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> Jesus called me Satan. Some of you would quit church and never come back. You know, the Bible says, in one part it says, and they left from following Jesus, and they never followed him again. They did not follow him because it was what he said. It was how they received what he said. It was their mentality. They could not see bigger than their mind. And so let's, guess what? We need to expand our mind, our faith, and believe that God can do more than he's ever done. It, not just in the church, not just in the world, but in your personal life, in your house. Believe it can happen and it will.
Everybody stand with me. Everybody stand with me. Mark 10, 27. Jesus, looking upon them, said these words, With men. Say, with men. It's impossible. But not with God. Just, just, just let that ring out. Just say, but not with God. But not with you, Lord. There are things that are impossible in the eyes of man, in the mind of man. But when it comes to you, nothing. If you break the word down, what's that mean? No thing. No thing is impossible. I just want you to think right now in your mind something that you want to see happen in your life that you almost think can't. And I dare you with audacious faith to believe God for it. And I'm going to ask you to make your way down to this altar this morning. Listen, some of you need to repent for your small thinking. Some of you need to ask God to forgive you because you believed that it couldn't happen. I'm talking about believing for something that is impossible in eyes of man. That cancer can be healed. That diabetes can be healed. That your heart can be healed. Come on, come on, make room. Come on, y'all come in, come in, make room. There's people coming. I expect a lot more, come on. It's time to raise the bar. It's time to raise the bar. It's time to raise the bar. It's time to raise the bar, church. The world is watching us. They are watching every move we make. And they are seeing what we're doing. They're seeing how we act. They're seeing how you respond as a husband. How you respond as a wife. How you respond as a mother. How you respond as a daddy. They're watching every move you make. And they're waiting to see something that they've never seen. Anybody can get mad. Take it out on their kids. Anybody can do that. Anybody can have an attitude. You can find them at Food Line, Walmart, or the restaurant you go to. How about let's raise the bar and say, I will not operate in the ways of the world, but I will operate in the ways of God. I will have a higher mentality. I'll take the higher road. Ephesians 3 and 20 says these words. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, say exceedingly, abundantly, say abundantly. Okay, so I'm pretty sure exceeding means more. Abundantly means what? A lot more. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or... I just want to tell you this, God's bigger than what you can think. Just because you think it's impossible don't mean God does. Let's get in sync with God. I know we can go farther. I know we can go greater. I know things can change. I believe they will, or I would not be standing in front of you this morning. I believe that what God has said, He will perform it. We're just getting started with Raise the Bar. We're just getting started. This is going to happen every Sunday morning until God turns the faucet off. Listen, we're going somewhere, we are going somewhere, and it is time for us to take as many people with us as we can. Listen, grab your neighbors, grab your family, and say, come on, it's 2018, it's time to get it right. I want you to grab your neighbor's hand right now, just grab somebody's hand, make a connection right now, we're going to believe. We're going to believe right now. Father God, we pray right now to break our mindset of limitations that your ways are not our ways hallelujah hallelujah your thoughts are not our thoughts that you've declared that they are greater than ours 
And so, God, as human beings, we submit to, with our limitations. We submit to you, and we know, God, there are things that you can do that are impossible with us. So we say, God, we're raising the bar of what we believe can happen. I believe for the marriage to be healed and restored right now that there's somebody right now that said these words I don't know how we are going to make it but I declare that God is greater than our limitations and that you will make it I believe there's a relationship with some grown children somebody in here has grown children that the relationship has been broken and you've said, I don't know how in my mind I can see it happen. God, heal and restore that situation and open up their minds to believe that God, that with you anything is possible. Lord, there's a physical limitation that you're going to heal, that you're going to heal this morning. I just declare you receive all that God has for you. Walk out of here with a new mindset that God is able. And we declare that whatever you want for us, whether we understand it or not, we receive it. We receive it. Somebody raise your hands in this place and just declare, I receive. I receive. I don't understand, but I receive it. I don't have to get it in my mind, but I receive it. God, you are able. I want you to shout this with me. Say, with men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Now somebody celebrate in victory in Jesus' name. We are raising, we are raising the bar. We're raising the bar. God is expanding my mind. God is expanding our faith. God is expanding what we believe and what we know is possible. You ain't going to be single forever. Hallelujah. You ain't always going to deal with the same finance situation. It's possible. It's possible. Don't you lose faith in God. Don't you lose faith in God. Don't you look, hug somebody and tell them, say, don't lose faith in God. Don't lose faith in God. God is able. God is able. God is able. Raise the bar in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God do what you need to do in her life, in her mind, and what is possible. Break every chain that is holding her back in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive the power. Receive the Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus, somebody stretch your hands this way. Just say, in the name of Jesus. A new season. A new season. Open your mind. Open your mind. God is able. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody thank God for her victory. Come on. Woo! I don't I don't know what we what we would do without God. And I have no idea what I'd be doing if it wasn't for God. I'd probably be in some kind of a mental institution. I'd be right beside you. We'd have the same bunk. But God, I want you to leave here knowing God is able. Don't put, don't put God in a box anymore. God is able. Amen. Amen. We love you. Love you so much. God bless you. Thank you.